They're not swords, it's a propeller, it's from Warp Drive, and it's finally time to put this on the airplane. I, it, I'm so excited. All right, guys, quick airplane update. Uh, yeah, the cowling is done and on. I have my air intake. I think I snuck some pictures online of this, maybe not by this point, but uh, that is completed. It's looking more and more like an airplane every single day, and uh, it better be because Osh is like at the end of this month. But uh, yeah, it's, it's time, guys. It's time to get the propeller on here. And I used to have a two blade propeller. Oh, don't look at any of this just yet. This was the propeller that was on there before, and it has worked, but it's also heavy. And I wanted to change to something lightweight and more modern. And that's where this stuff comes in here. This is from Warp Drive Propeller, and I could not be happier with this. One of their claims to fame is that these propellers are solid carbon fiber. They don't have a, a foam or a wood core to them. They're gonna be more robust and useful long-term and easily to repair versus some of the other stuff I've seen on the market. But uh, it comes with this beautiful hub and uh, these are solid pieces of aluminum and gosh billet is that the right word they're billet aluminum and they, they've been cnc down to exactly what we need and yes we are going with four blades like i said carbon fiber we have a nickel plated leading edge right there so these are going to be perfect for the red rocket and kind of match the madness that it really truly is um, coming with that kit is all of the hardware that we're going to need. We have this. This is for setting the pitch of this because it is ground adjustable. Um, it comes with these extra little clear stickers for the leading edge with a roller to put those on. And my kit came with this plate, which goes on the front of the hub when we go and mount everything up. Now, um, this does not come with the kit. And the reason is, is because you need different sizes depending on what your application is. And for the high horsepower application I have, um, I needed, I believe this one is 3 eighths, which is, uh, uh, yeah, that's just the one that we needed. And we learned that from the manual, uh, which is right here. It comes with it. And there's a lot of really great information here. So if you're planning on doing this, definitely read through the manual first uh, because it, it can help out a ton. Now, uh, supporting things that I had to get, these are the bolts to be able to mount it. And that came from a company called Sabre. And uh, that's this piece right here. This is a two inch propeller extension. And this may be a little bit big for my application. That is my own fault because I just took it from that old nose cone and propeller. I'm like, oh, that one's two inch, I need two inch. And uh, yeah, I could have gone with something smaller. This is still gonna work just fine. But this is a beautiful propeller. Um, extension and uh, oh, there it is there is Sabre right there and uh, so all the hardware to be able to mount this came from Sabre they were great they're like hey what's the thickness of this what is that and they sent me all of the proper hardware so this is what we're going to be installing right now Dwayne is here with me to make sure that we don't screw anything up and uh, yeah what else do we need to say anything else or should we just get started get started, get started. okay Putting the blades in the hub is a fairly straightforward process and the instructions actually call out that you can orient the bolts in any direction that you want. But I opted to have the nuts out for easier access when adjusting the pitch, which you'll see later. I used my drill for most of this, but set it to a low torque setting just enough to get the nylon lock nuts to set because again, we're going to be adjusting these. Oh, this thing is just beautiful. Oh. Anyways, we can't mount this just yet. I really, really want to, but uh, we need to do some maths, and I hate maths. Uh, we have this guy to be able to adjust the pitch of the propeller blades. So we need to get our reference point first, which includes putting this on the front of the airplane, and so setting our zero point so that we can adjust this appropriately. Wait, wait, what are you doing? You put fingerprints on it. Oh, gosh. So I got this guy. All we have to do is put it right here like this and then take this little wheel on the inside and make it so that the little bubble is level. All right, I like that right there. And I'm gonna take this marker and there's uh, little tick marks all along this and I'm gonna mark on here where my zero point is. All right, I've got my zero point. Now, all we have to do is rotate this the number of degrees that we want. And in the instructions, there's a bunch of stuff on what direction to turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on what side of the propeller you're working on. And um, yeah, that's gonna be trial and error for us because I, I, I didn't quite 
read that right. So we'll, we'll get there though. Um, I think we're gonna start at 10 degrees. Good point. We're going to start at 10 degrees and uh, go from there. There's instructions on how to set the pitch just perfectly for your airplane versus the static RPM and all those things, which means once we get this on, we've we got to start the plane. But uh, yeah, and with this set, we can now put, put the propeller on. Sawing the propeller from here is super easy. Mounting plate, six bolts, and a little help from my drill did the trick. Lower torque again because torquing these down now would keep us from being able to adjust the pitch hub is on and it actually looks way cooler with the hardware all on it which i didn't do when i was test fitting it before but next step Dwayne is out over here and he is putting this little contraption on to help us get the proper angle for the blade and we said we were going to do 10 so um, that's what we need to do and we've already got it adjusted up there at the top you can see the little tick marks there so all right Dwayne, you ready here you, you take the camera I'm going to adjust this bad boy. All right. So we just move this like that. Oh, there, there, that's it. Okay. So this one is set. We just got to do it three more times and I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So next thing. Okay. And that next step was torquing all of this down and there's torquing procedures inside of the instructions right over there. Um, but it's very time consuming and, and we didn't want to show you guys that or waste your time. So it, it's actually ready to run now, right? Yes. Okay. So it's ready to run. And what we're looking for here is minus 400 off of our static RPM, like the high one. So yes. this is a 2,700 RPM engine. So we're looking for 2,300. And so if we're not getting 2300 while it's running on the ground, um, we need to, if it's going too much, we need to increase the pitch. And if it's not too much, we need to decrease the pitch. Yep. Yeah. So that's where we're going next. We, we get to start this up. So let's, let's get it out here in the aisle. That's, this is exciting. I think you might be too lean. I think so. It just shut off on its own. I know what's wrong with it. it ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> All right. It's been a couple of days since we did that initial startup, and there is actually a problem with the airplane, and it had more to do with programming the engine information system. We had the wrong RPM setting set into it. So when we were running the engine up, it was telling us we we're only getting to 1,680 RPMs at full throttle we knew something was wrong even with this propeller on so once we got all that sorted we were able to actually figure out what pitch angle to be able to put this back at so let me show you what we were working on so here is the document that we were working with and when we had a 10 degree pitch we were getting up to 2500 rpm and i believe i said this before but since it's been a couple of days we want to take the maximum rpm of 2700 and get down to minus 400 rpm so we're looking for 20 300 rpm and we went ahead and wrote all of the pitches and stuff so we went from 10 to 15 so we could kind of extrapolate where we wanted to be and at 15 we were at 2175 so we went into the 13 degree and that got us 20 to 90 static rpm that's exactly where we wanted to be now we were using this guy but behind me you can see we switched over to something a little bit different and let me show you how that one works it's just slightly easier than this so this is just a digital gauge and i've been using it a lot on the airplane but we need to zero it out with the crank here just like we do the other one so we'll do this and hit zero there we go and now i can take this and i have a little rubber band right there and just like magic that is there i needed two hands to put that on but you can see we are at 13.1 degrees and that is perfect and then all we had to do was move each one of these propellers set it to as close to 13 degrees as we could to be able to get the correct pitch and you can see it's ready to rock and roll so we're gonna go fly with this in a couple of days we're very excited for it and uh <laughs> i couldn't be happier with this four blade propeller it literally kind of makes this complete i mean it is kind of a crazy machine and, and just complete mayhem so having it like this really brings it all together and ignore my mess this came yesterday so 
even though we have the pitch on, everything is torqued down and we've wire tied all of it, I have to undo it so I can install the nose cone, but not after, or not until I paint it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that guy on and make that red, and that is going to complete this airplane. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to Warp Drive Propellers for making this portion of the airplane build possible. And not only that, they are hosting us at OSH this year. So you will be able to come and see the red rocket at the Warp Drive Propeller booth. I'm behind, it already happened. Come and look at the red rocket. It has been a passion project for me and I am incredibly excited to have been able to share, you, share it with you guys throughout this entire journey. So, uh, definitely check out Warp Drive's website. They have a lot of products for you. This particular one goes up to uh, 200 horsepower. So I'm right there at 170, 180 horsepower. So this is absolutely perfect for me. Guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for following along. And as always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.